from uh, Fred Thrallfall. I was in the Royal Canadian Air Force back in the early 50s. Uh, I was a communications instructor. I went through uh, communication schools. While uh, in Toronto, stationed as at a, an air station and uh, as an instructor. I just finished an experiment and uh, I was on my way back to uh, my classroom and uh, there are other um, engineers and uh, what have you at the Institute that I've known of because I'm a frequent visitor there. And uh, there was just one experiment that was going on and it was uh, approximately a four by four enclosed class um, enclosure inside this room. And on a, on a, a cabinet, there was a large glass ashtray. And uh, I said, well, what's, uh, what's going on? And so we've got an experiment underway. We've got the similar in the other room with no ashtray. That's what I forgot to mention. So uh, we are talking away and one of the uh, scientists said, go ahead. And uh, next thing that ashtray wasn't sitting there. Everyone went into the next room and excited as can be because the ashtray was sitting there. So it dematerialized and materialized, and uh, which was quite the thing. And uh, after seeing that, I've been, and with my knowledge through uh, electronics in those days, which is still a lot primitive compared to what it is today, uh, it was quite exciting. And uh, I could visualize that these things could happen. And uh, mind you, this is this is back in 1990 uh, or 1953 when it transpired. It was uh, Station Toronto, which was the uh, old Hunt Club, which was the RCAF Station Toronto. And when the uh, when the scientists uh, said okay, did someone flip a switch or do something to make there it there will be. Uh, I didn't see who it was. There was a panel of instruments and everything off on the side, and uh, who was there had to throw a switch. And when they they had they had to energize whatever equipment that they had in order for it to take place. It just disappeared completely. It was there one minute and boom, or one second, and it was gone. And as we went into the other room, it was sitting there. And it was the, the, the identical same object. Exactly the same object. Went through, everyone rushed through to the other side to see if anything happened, and uh, it did, it was there. And the excitement, and uh, I saw it there, and I said, well, and I was asked, I said, well, what are you doing here? And I said, well, I just finished an experiment, sir, and uh, I was on my way back, and I was, He's talking to a couple of our friends here. Well, you're not supposed to see this. I said, yes, sir, and I went back to my classroom. So you were specifically told that you were not supposed to I see I wasn't that. supposed to see that because I wasn't part of the investigation team or the scientists. But with having, uh, being an electronic uh, instructor, I had top clearance to be in facilities for the experiments. Some of the, uh, the experiments that uh, that we would volunteer for would would take a period of time. Sometimes it'd be two or three days. And uh, with the uh, clearance that I had, I was able to um, draw out a projector and also films from the library uh, on the on the base. And uh, I used to get the uh, the films that were taken from the cameras that were mounted on uh, Spitfires and Hurricanes, Mustangs, whatever, during World War II. And uh, you see the uh, 
the plane flying along there and they're going after the German aircraft and you see the tracer bullets going out and the, the craft uh, going down in flames and that. And up in a corner, one of the corners, up, down or down below, there'd be a strange little object sitting there which drew my attention. And I'd seen it on many films, different shapes, different positions. And uh, this piqued my curiosity with regards to UFOs. Uh, I had heard of the crash uh, down in, Mex in New Mexico. I have seen the maneuvers in the sky at uh, complete right angles and uh, rapid speed. In many cases, in many cases I have seen it from different films that were drawn from the library. So they're uh, not just one, there are several times. I, I saw the objects that I believed were UFOs that I could see, definitely. And they, uh, there are different shapes. Some of them are round, some of them are oblong, but they were at different distances as well. So there's the odd one, you'd be, I'd be able to see a little more detail than the other. What uh, kind of detail could you make well, out on some of them? Well, the, the detail, uh, it's not a real close-up shot, shot, but it would look like they're, um, how will I explain it? Like markings, but not like markings we'd put on an aircraft. You know, it uh, it could be a series of windows or lights or whatever it could be. It's, it's you just see an outline. But you had no doubt that these were structured objects and not. That's correct. Yes, twenty thirty films. Had o UFOs o on. O over a period of time, yes, I'd see UFOs in them. Whereby, it was something there that was watching what was going on. My first uh, exposure to. The discovery that this anti-gravity research was quite a big area, not talked about very much, uh, but it, that it was a major endeavor by major aerospace corporations. This uh, came from this report, Electrogravitic Systems, which I found very revealing. This is a photocop. 